Okay, hi guys, I'm Aidan from GTG Coaching. So we're gonna do the second part of the series talking about transfer of training. So in the first part of the series, I was describing how the gym can transfer in the sport performance and how basically you can get a benefit um, to your sporting performance by training in the gym or more or less doing like a strength and conditioning program. So to have a recap from the first video, what we're talking about was general transfer of training. So what that means is uh, you can only get so good at a skill that you do before you get to the point of diminishing returns. So the idea that when you're relatively new to something, you'll get a quick spike in terms of progress, but eventually as you get more experienced and you do that skill or sport more, the payoff gets less and less. And at that point, it's very helpful to try and add in more skills or tools to your toolbox to get better at the task at hand or get better at your skill or better at your sport. Okay, so when we're talking about a general transfer over to sport or general transfer of skills, basically what we mean is what sort of stuff can you do in the gym that will have a carryover to your sport, sort of general qualities that you can build. So stuff that we covered in the last video uh, to think about was how much weight training you have behind you before making this decision. Also, how long you've been in the sport for, so how long you've been doing the skill for, and also just injuries. So there's a couple of things to think about, but basically what stuff can you do in the gym that will carry over the greater uh, performance in your sport? So the example I used last time was uh, running and rugby and try and look at something that is uh, more relatively straightforward and has fewer sort of skills, which is running you know you basically are focusing on the task of running rugby integrates quite a lot of different skills and how you can get a benefit from doing your uh, your weight training into the transfer into those into those sports so in the first video when we're talking about general transfer then basically what we mean is developing just um, a, a lot of qualities that will have a transfer over towards the sport that you're doing so again with that case of just using rugby you're trying to develop um, you know, muscle mass and strength and speed and agility and there's a lot of different ways to do that and if you're pretty new to the sport or pretty new to a strength program um, you can get progress and you can see gains with um, not an awful lot of effort um, because you're so new to it so that's sort of new stimulus again that new thing that new that new task or new skill such as weightlifting in this case will there's a lot of room um, for growth and progress there. But like with everything, there's a point of diminishing returns. And as you get better and better and better at it, that begins to taper off. So at some point we gotta start looking at what things will give you the greatest transfer or carry over to your sport. And that's what we're gonna talk about right now. So when you're building your, your general base of skills, at some point you want to make it quite specific or peak that pyramid which we talked about in the last video towards sport and performance so we've got three things to maybe look at here a general approach okay a specific approach and doing the actual skill or sport itself okay so in the context of a strength and conditioning program or stuff you can do in the gym general strength things that you can do in the gym specific strength strength things you can do in the gym and then transfer into the sport. Now when I say in strength, there's actually quite a lot of other stuff that you can do there in terms of movement, movements that help prevent injury, um, build an energy system, so anaerobic capacity, aerobic capacity, lots and lots of different things. But just for the sake of the video, let's just call it strength, okay? Um, or doing strength movements or, or resistance-based movements. So big general approach, lots of things to cover, more specific things that carry into the sport, doing the sport itself, okay? So that's kind of the three tiers we're gonna look at here. So under general, let's just take rugby for instance, because it's quite a, a straightforward one to look at, because I think that generally everybody can appreciate that you need you know, muscle mass, you need to be strong, and especially the further you get up the, um, I guess, level of competition, the more you probably have to look at these qualities because they're fairly ingrained in rugby now, a lot of people tend to do them. So an exercise, which is a good carry to rugby, would be the back squat, okay? So building and creating a big back squat, okay, with a lot of weight on the bar, will build muscle, will build a lot of strength, um, a lot of power movement through the hips. But how do we get that to transfer onto the pitch? Okay, so we could take the back squat and look at exactly how it carries into some parts of the game, such as, you know, if you're in a scrum or if you're in a ruck, that kind of idea is driving from your hips, driving from your quads, you know, they kind of have a direct transfer. 
but then there's also other skills that that can lend itself to, but maybe not directly. So if you're talking about something like uh, changing an angle, um, whenever you're trying to run, decelerate, and change direction in rugby, does that look like it comes directly from a back squat? No, but in terms of being able to load your hips, load your quads, absorb force, transfer it, you can make an argument and you can see how that can lead to there. But how can we fill the gaps in, in between to make that a bit more, a bit of a higher transfer, a better transfer towards that actual skill? And that's where the specificity part can come into it. So we're talking about how you can apply specificity towards your sport. So basically taking things that in the, are in the gym that have a more direct transfer to your sport. Let's take the example that most field sports or most um, court sports will, will involve, and that is trying to change direction. So basically running, stopping, absorbing force, changing direction, or changing direction at speed. So that's a quite a big one that we can use as a really helpful example. So let's say in a general approach, whenever you start off, is that you are doing some pretty uh, heavy back squats or you're, you're back squatting and you're building the weight up, okay? So you're trying to get stronger and stronger and stronger at that. That doesn't have a direct transfer necessarily, the change in direction, but you're building a lot of the musculature and a lot of the qualities that you're gonna need that you can begin to taper towards that specific approach. So let's say we go from a back squat we're then trying to go into something like a lunge, or maybe you do the back squat and the lunge at the same time. And then we're looking at what's it like changing direction, sort of moving into that hip. So from there, we'll maybe do a lateral lunge and drive back out of a lateral lunge. So you're doing something that's similar or mimics the quality at hand or the task at hand that you're trying to get better at. And then after that, we're maybe trying to do things that are similar to the speed as high or yeah, similar to the speed is how that movement is executed. So from there, we're maybe doing a lateral sled drag just to build that change of direction quality, or we're doing some med ball work where you're stepping into the movement and then driving back out of it. Things that make it relatively similar to what you're doing. There's gonna get a point where you wanna stop making the exercise too relatable towards the sport. So if you make it exactly like the skill, that, the, that you're trying to do on the field or in your sport, you can sometimes change the mechanics and it's not beneficial. This usually is pretty true if your sport involves a ball or something external that is a skill that you have to use and it weighs a certain amount. You can change the technique there if you apply too much specificity to that and don't just play the game or do the skill with the implemented hand. There's a carryover to repeating that movement in a similar pattern or doing some work in the exact same pattern with maybe a, an implement that weighs slightly more or slightly less. But again, you're going to get to the point of diminishing returns. Okay, so some takeaways from this. If you've never been to the gym before, if you've not done a strength and conditioning program and you're very new to it, you will get a lot of benefit from just doing a general approach, getting in, doing some resistance training, getting stronger, building a bit of muscle mass, it will carry over really well to your sport, okay? If you've been training for a while um, and you've been engaged in your sport for quite a while, then you're probably gonna need to build a general approach and then make that a wee bit more specific to carry into specific tasks or specific qualities of your sport so that you can see a performance improvement, especially if you're at a level that's very competitive and other people are doing a similar sort of, similar sort of thing and they also have a strength and conditioning program. And remember, that doesn't just come down to the strength training aspect to it. There is also the cognitive or psychological aspects that you can build upon in this. There are energy systems, there are ability to drive or produce force in certain directions. There's many different qualities. But if you're pretty new to this and you've never really done a strength and conditioning program before, a good general approach is gonna give you some pretty big carryover towards your, your sport and performance.